Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome back to Critique Hour. It feels like it's been ages since we had a class, um, but it, it's only been a couple days. I miss you guys. I miss this. I am so happy we're back at it so strong. Um, and I hope it continues like the same momentum. I hope momentum turns into discipline. I hope momentum turns into, you know, uh, um, what's what's the term? Uh, the, you know, a frick. I don't know the, the term for something that is constant and is stable and consistent. I hope momentum turns into consistency. <clears throat> inspiration is wonderful and you may have been inspired to start your New Year's resolutions but remember inspiration has to turn into something you don't stay inspired remember that you don't stay inspired inspiration just gets the ball rolling and it's just the momentum and then you have to have something else propel and fuel that forward and hopefully the momentum helped instill some good discipline habits so if you started your New Year's resolution and you were drawing shit since the first of January your momentum and inspiration is long done now. That inspiration is gone. And the the the, 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 the re repetition of daily gray winter days is starting to set in. And you may have stopped drawing. But look closer um, at yourself and you'll see that maybe, ooh, I have better habits. Ooh, art doesn't feel so weird anymore. Oh, I like my tablet. I like my dashboard. I'm getting comfortable here. I like this new schedule um uh so it's not commitment um yeah yeah and momentum will t help turn the task that you the inspire you were inspired to pursue into habit into a repetitive consistent uh dependable set of skills um not skills uh set of behavior and then that behavior turns into skill <clears throat> so your inspiration has long been done hopefully by now you guys have picked up on some good schedule changes in your life you're still going at it strong it's only half of january you guys you got a whole other year to keep going and then you got a lifetime of drawing to keep doing so that inspiration isn't gonna run out any uh or that 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 desire uh, for art isn't gonna run out and you're gonna have to adjust your discipline adjust yourself remember you cannot Change your art without first changing yourself. So let's find my glasses and let's get started on today's class. Before I get into the painting today, um, if you'd like to join as a patron, you don't have to join as a $20 patron and you don't have to be a patron to be part of our Discord. But if you'd like to join as a $1 patron, I don't work with any marketing agencies or anything like that. I don't work with through um, uh, uh, monetization on YouTube, my videos make like two cents a month uh, because they're too long and they're not monetized. So you guys supporting me through Patreon directly is just one way to keep the classes alive, one way to show your support. Um, and I'm not gonna shrink my videos anytime soon. I'm not gonna change their length for any reason. Um, if you want to join as, as a higher tier, there's educational material in, in, uh, in exchange. Um, so you get to join us on our private Discord, you get brushes, you get assignments, um, you get uh, uh, exclusive time-lapse videos, you get all of my original work, um, you get exclusive streams and homework, uh, you get a community, a tight-knit community in our Discord, um, if you join as an apprentice. Uh, but you can always just join as a watcher if you want to support uh, the class. If everyone on Discord just joined as a watcher, I really wouldn't need uh, to, to constantly announce Patreon all the time. It'll help support me. It'll help support my future as your teacher. It'll help support the future of the community that I'm running for you guys. So um, if you can, hop on if you want to deal with the checkout. I don't understand if you don't want to deal with it and online shopping experience and checking out and stuff. But if you want to deal with it. Um, and join as a dollar patron. It means the world. Uh, my, my goal is a thousand patrons um, by the end of this year. Uh, so hopefully we can reach it. And if you want to submit your work, you just go to istabrak.com, click on the Reddit icon, you get to my subreddit and you just submit your work. And uh, any work that's submitted here, if you want to do a 14 day challenge, you can submit it here and get critiqued by your peers. Um, and uh, 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 this is where I choose stuff for critique hour. So I'm going to be working on this piece today. Um, as for the challenge, the challenge brief will be uploaded by tonight, hopefully. 
um, once I get to editing it, it will be a community challenge posted on the Reddit pinned at the top. And it will include um, a description or a, like a something to get the ball rolling for a narrative for an environment, one environment. Um, and it will be due every every two weeks. There will be an environment critique hour and it'll be all about um, depth. It'll be all about creating a scene. It'll be a natural textures, stuff like that. Um, and I think we need to start seeing more environments in our community. Um, it will be color or grayscale optional. I really recommend color because we need to, we need to start talking about color a little bit more. And yeah, so look out for it. It'll be pinned at the top of the Reddit. It will be an environment challenge. All the requirements, uh, size, resolution, all that stuff will be included in the brief. And it will be due in two weeks' time. And you have to follow the narrative described in the, in the, uh, in the pitch, in that, um, uh, the prompt. So uh, look out for that there. And that's it. Portrait Studio is still on sale, and it will be on sale until the end of the month, possibly into February. I'm really not sure. Um, but into the end of the month, um, and, uh, yeah, if you guys want Portrait Studio, I'll be using it today. If you don't know what it is, you want some kind of proof on its power, or you want to see it in action, I'll be using it today, very, very soon. Um, and it's 50% off right now, along with my brush bundle, um, which is also on sale. I don't think that's 50, I think that's 30% off. <clears throat> but, yeah, let's get started on today's class. So open up Photoshop because I haven't opened that yet. Crap. Um, so for this scene, um, there are some major issues with it. And I just need to turn on my light because my monitor is too bright right now. This is a very, very awkward stance and it's disproportionate. It makes no sense. She looks like she has five hairs on her head. The light environment is off. It's too dark. It's too muddy and it does not feel epic. It does not feel like a dangerous scene. She's looking in some random little... I don't know what she's looking at. I mean, you just killed 10 men. Why are you looking down? And she looks like she's blind and can't see and her eyes are in a random spot. So we need to give her a little bit more expression power a more fluid, natural, empowering stance and, and poise to her, to her, um, I don't know, proud uh, way of standing here um, and her you know pride in her kill or maybe she just caught a bunch of dudes and we need to make sense of the light environment make it brighter in the background this is a full day um, you know high noon I guess um, in a desert uh, so it shouldn't be that dark the clouds shouldn't be that dark um, we need to change that 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 where she's looking her expression needs to change and then where she's looking needs to change. So before we get into that, let's make bigger changes happen on the piece. And I'm just gonna have this here as reference so I can see what I'm doing. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. So I can see what I'm doing with my model in Portrait Studio. So this is Portrait Studio. You can pose figures in Portrait Studio and I'll be doing that. Um, I'm just using these. And I feel like we need to add some perspective because <clears throat> if we could, if we put the camera a little bit lower than her, so the camera here is level with her right here. If we put the camera a little bit lower than her, it'll feel a little bit more empowering uh, just to make the camera slightly lower than she is. But I mean, it's not going to be that much. It's just a slight lowering that we can see the lower part of her crotch. We can see the lower part of her arms. We can see a little bit of the lower part of her chin. You can see the lower part of the breasts. That means the camera is a little bit lower. So just take a look at when the camera is level. We don't see any of that stuff. So when the camera is a little bit higher, uh, lower than her waistline, and way lower than her head, she feels a little bit more strong. And so let's, let's pose this. So she's got this strong pose to her legs and her... <clears throat> Oh, that's a little too much. So I'm just posing. And in order to pose, you just have to press the joint and press E. Press W to get the, um, like, you're your, your repositioning uh, X, Y, and Z, the joint. 
and press R to resize the joint and everything attached to the joint. So press E in order to just change the tilt from the axis point, which is the joint you chose. Everything is moving in X, Y, or Z, and you just use these little indicators here to move alongside those joints. A lot of questions online about how to use Portrait Studio, but there is a manual um, in the file, in the help section right here. All right, so she is kind of has her leg a little bit open, which is kind of a sign of strength just to have your leg open just a little bit, especially on a female. You know, that wide stance, you know, it uh, expresses a lot of strength. Her leg is on top of a dead corpse. I would say her heel is pushing down on it and her foot is a little bit kind of sitting on top. The heaviest part is the part that carries the weight of the leg. And she's and then the, and then the feet are kind of the toes are kind of just pointing up along the the hill of the dead body. <laughs> And you're kind of tilting her foot out this way. This doesn't make any sense. It seems like she has a wooden leg or something. It doesn't feel natural. So I'm going to just, you know, take some creative liberty and just do my own thing with that. So she's going to tilt her leg out. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more straight. Maybe this leg is a little bent as well because she's just kind of trying to balance on it. I mean, she's standing on a human body. Have you ever stood on someone? Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you, I don't know if that even happens in a normal life. If you end up like on top of a person, just actually standing on top of a person. But if you've ever like, as someone asked you to massage their back with your, and stand on their back or something, you can't find your footing. You're just about to fall. So I don't know how she's doing this with both legs on top. I mean, it would be make better sense if her feet were directly on top of, and one of the feet, one of the, one of the legs was on the ground and then her you know, triumphant leg was on the corpse, but she, as the way you drew it, is on top of the bodies. So she's going to be a little bit wonky legged, um, and that would make a little bit more sense for me. And it's just the slightest little change, and it feels a lot less stiff. And I'm going to just tilt her torso up, but tilt her neck down. And I want her to look into the distance. I, I don't want her, and I want her head tilted that way and proud. Um, and I want her to kind of look into the distance a little bit. I get it, you know, she's um, gloating, but she, her, her chin is way too low for us to really believe that she's very, very proud of, you know, what's happened. I want her to actually look proud. So the forearm is a little trickier because the forearm has so many moint points points <laughs> so many points of movement it can rotate it can get closer to the arm and it can uh, uh, and it has a limit that there's the elbow so we have to make sure that those points of movement movement are all moved manually the, the you can't they don't move automatically on portrait studio you have to move them manually so I'm tilting it back to the perspective that I want. And this is all real time. And I'm tilting the, you can move the fingers. I just don't have time to move every little finger, uh, but you can move the fingers um, if you need to uh, for the position. They're, they're posable as well. The hand is posable. All right, for the other arm, it's because the arm itself has many points of movement, so that's why I'm being so careful with the arms. You got wrist movement and wrist rotation. You've got elbow movement and elbow rotation, and then you've got shoulder movement and shoulder rotation. All that added together means arms can be very, very flexible. And because students don't know this, they end up making really, really awkward looking arms um, because it's, they're just too stiff. They don't read. For this shoulder, I'm going to use the R, I mean, actually, the W joint. The W movement, and I'm just going to bring the shoulder down a little bit. <clears throat> and then we go back to the E movement. And I'm just going to let the arm kind of just hang there really, really delicately. But I'm just going to let a little bit of a pose in the elbow, like nothing too crazy. And you kind of tilted her, her hand like this, which kind of makes no sense. She could just be holding the whip with her arm hanging naturally. Like it doesn't really need, she doesn't really need that. But also, I mean, you can do more than just making the arm 
hang there. You can have her hand on her waist a little bit more triumphant. Um, you know, and holding the whip. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be just a hanging arm. But I would actually just, for the sake of the critique, I'm just going to... Actually, I really do want her arm posing. kind of feels a stiff when we have both... I don't like that Barbie doll bend in the elbow. You know, I just don't like that. I've never liked it. You guys, you guys ever had those Barbies that have that weird fucking... Um, uh, like like arms it was it's just so weird I just they always thought they were weird why why don't you just make them straight as a kid I used to ask weird questions but <clears throat> let's uh let's focus on the classes to break <laughs> okay and so I'm gonna just make her chest a little bit more proud so I'm pushing that all the way back and I'm pushing the head back forward or the, the neck really back forward and then tilting the head up and on the side, you know, she's really, really proud. I'm just trying to let that arm hang naturally and then just kind of shift it back to fall naturally. All right, so let's take a full picture. Feels like a natural pose, doesn't feel awkward. And I'm trying to position it so it's somewhere that matches the painting's perspective. Okay. Looking good. So then what I do is I just go to the um, options by clicking on the title of the model and I hide joints. And then I can take my screenshot this way or I can just take a, a closer screenshot this way. Oh, stupid green shot. <clears throat> All right, and now we have our reference. So let's get started on the critique. Um, before I make any changes to the body, I'm gonna try to work on the background first because the background in this is, is so murky. <clears throat> she should be darker because she's kind of in a silhouette. For this to, for this to make sense, there's no direct light um, and she's kind of in a silhouette. Um, and I need to do like a smart select for the background. And I don't know how to do that. <clears throat> Color range. Focus area. Cancel. I don't know how to do smart. I think it's a tool. Uh, art history. Smart. I forget where it is. I've, I've used it before. I just never used it, and I wanted to use it in class today. <laughs> I'm sorry that, that I don't know what it is. Let me. I'm sorry about that accent. <laughs> Did that. All right. It's okay. It's not made for kids, though. So. I'll take my bigotry to to the grave with me. No kids will be affected. <clears throat> uh. Let me see uh, what everyone is saying. Maybe somebody can help me. No. <laughs> um, spot or healing. It's like a color sampler. It's like a uh, magic eraser tool. Background eraser tool. Is it background eraser tool? There's a remove background button you can try. Background eraser tool. What is it? E. Um, just let me put that where it is over here. Okay, done. So we're going to get background eraser to Where are we going <laughs> to erase it? It's not erasing the background. Oh, oh, it worked. Okay. So I'm sorry about that sound that I just made. Um, wow. Cool. All right, so just going to... Again, try to do this tolerance low tolerance okay uh, okay this is annoying because it's getting some shit and not other shit that's annoying it's flip but let's just this is better than lassoing I think because I'm not going to do this with every painting I just wanted to find a quick way to um 
get the background out of the way. Oh my God, like why does it decide that some areas aren't worth erasing? Like it's, it doesn't really, this is why I don't mess with shit like this because, <laughs> damn it. What if tolerance is high? I just needed the tricky areas. <sighs> okay, God help us all with Photoshop and its silly little tricks. God. <laughs> like I'm more, I'm like control Zing more than, this is like the worst Photoshop commercial <laughs> ever. Anyway, I wanted to raise a concern of mine. Um, in my upcoming life, there's a big change. I'm about to buy a house, and the house needs a lot of work. Like a ton of work, flooring, walls, you know, all that business. Um, and I wanted to ask you guys for your advice. Like, is it a really, really tricky thing? To, like, I know it's a, it seems like it's such a, I mean, it does seem like an insurmountable goal right now for me. But is it? Is it easier than I think, or is it actually just as hard as I imagined to renovate your home? Um, I don't have any expertise. I mean, I've been watching videos on construction and renovation since I was 20. Um, and I've, my dad's a contractor and my uncle's a contractor. I've always been you know, familiar with that field of work, but I feel like I'm biting more than I can chew with this house. And though I will go for the house, definitely, because it comes with a beautiful backyard, I am worried about the amount of work I'm going to be putting in and I feel like I'm going to be overwhelmed. I also don't want to be out of class for too long. I do have to take a break soon to, in order to work on it and move. The move itself is going to kill me, but, you know, just, just be with my back problem. And you know me, you guys, like, I, I want to do everything. I want to do the whole project myself or I'll at least supervise it very, very closely and do a lot of the work. But I'm just, I'm just scared at this point. Um, of what's coming. I feel like I would have done more work if I had lassoed. But yeah, what do you guys think? You know, you can comment in the comment section. Um, just let me know your thoughts. Have you ever taken on such a big construction project? What is it like? <clears throat> what do I have to look out for? What are some things you recommend? I know one big piece of advice I got is just buy your own tools. You're eventually going to use them if it's a big house renovation. You can't just keep renting tools. So it's a good investment to just buy your tools. Renting a tool will, you know, four times will eventually add up to the price of buying it. So you might as well just buy the tool and save yourself the money. That's good advice I got. But what do you guys um, recommend? Why am I doing it this way? Like, why? Why am I, why am I doing it this way? I'm still gonna have to lasso and keep the background when I go back in the history. You know what? You 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 know you tried it, and that's what counts. You tried the stupid little dumbass tool, and 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 that's what counts. Oh my God, this is such a mess. I'm just gonna go back to go back to this, and get maybe forty percent. There we go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Look at this. I mean, this is why I use this. <laughs> it's so sensical. <laughs> Look how quickly I can work. Anyway, if you ever like, oh, you know, you're not using enough Photoshop tools, yeah, just laugh in their face. Because you know what? A lot of these Photoshop tools are gimmicks, and that's the truth of it. Okay, so now I select the whole thing. Control C, go back to before I did all this crap. Control V, select it, and then and just see what I haven't, you know, lassoed out, and then just keep the background, and then I can finally start editing. So if you're commenting right now about the whole question about construction and renovating a house, I can't see it yet. I'm, I'm working on this but if you could leave a comment on the video I would be able to work with that better 
Um, actually, I'll just keep the dead bodies. Something that isn't weird to say in Critique Hour. I'll keep the dead bodies. <clears throat> okay. So we are just going to select the hair a little bit better. A little bit better. And then I'm going to one more thing, which is, uh, oh, I thought I kept the bodies. Hmm. Damn it. Fuck. All right. Merge down paste. Mother. Give me a sec, you guys. I'm sorry. <sighs> Oh. oh, what did I just do? It made the background all cool. How to content to wear fill. Try it now. Okay. Background color. Okay. Doesn't matter anymore. I don't know. All right, so let's start with these edits. Um, on the background. The background needs to be much lighter as a whole uh, because it's a, it's a time of day when the light outside is very very strong and so in a painting and an illustration we're not taking a photograph over here we're not taking like a technical photograph of how it's going to look out there we're taking general estimates based off representations of values of these objects especially how these objects react to light. So when we're looking at like, you know, uh, like a, a metallic piece of texture or something, that metallic texture is going to be exaggerated, not photographically accurate sometimes. So when we're talking about the big sky up there and we're and it's in a desert and it's mid afternoon, we're talking about really really bright symbol value. That's a really awkward thing to say because I don't like promoting symbols and I don't like generalization when it comes to light. But when I say symbol values, I mean we're representing the value um, with like a general estimate that we would have like as a symbol representation of what's happening in that environment. So the symbol of a light source in the, like a midday is super bright. Excuse me, super bright, um, super blue, super blinding. That alone has made the foreground so much more better, so much more better, so much more readable. See how dark it was before. Like, what? What is it? Is it daytime? Why is it so? Why is it such a dark blue? Why is it such a sunset blue? And there are sunset blues. Sometimes the sky is still blue during a sunset, and you think, "Hey, the sky is still pretty bright." No, it's not. If you can look up and your eyes aren't blinded, it's not bright. Um, uh, in the sunset, you can look all the while. You can look up. You can look up at the sky. In daytime, try that. Try looking up in the sky, at the sky, and you're not looking at the sun, just at the sky. It's blinding. So that's what's going to make this read a little bit better. It still selected the thing. God dang it. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to just try to take this back. And uh, darken it. Why does Photoshop feel like like it doesn't know me anymore? You know, like it feels like Photoshop and me just don't like each other. Like we haven't talked in a while. So that's just how it feels, you know, Photoshop. Like it feels like you don't love me anymore. It feels like everything's changed. All right. All right. So that that's done. Then we have the colors that need to be corrected and the foreground, which has unusually light values considering it's a it's a silhouette. So I'm just gonna. Drop it like it's, oh my god, it's so cringy. I've been really cringy. <clears throat> Drop the value like it's hot. <laughs> Stupid. It's so cringy. Okay, um, and then I'm going to color correct. So what I'm going to use as a color corrector is this weird green sandy beige. That's going to help me create the atmosphere. The atmosphere, though it's a blue sky outside, is still desert. And so I'm going to use a color corrector. 
and I'm just gonna brush this value over everything. Everything gets a little thin. And though you already had a lot of great color correction here, that's what we need to do. Okay, so this makes a lot more sense. And then we have other atmospheric indicators. Before I fix her, we have atmospheric, you know, uh, sand that's needed here, this perspective, this perspective application, which makes the foreground feel like, yeah, there's a lot of sand here, but it also makes the foreground feel far away because between us and the foreground, between us and the background is a lot of sand. Even between us and the foreground. And then we have her and her awkward proportions. And before I correct her, I just want to fix the background a little bit just so I can, as I edit her, I don't have background seeping through, which I should have done the content to wear. It's okay. It's just really quick fixes anyway. <clears throat> It's just the reason why I don't know a million little Photoshop tricks is because I never needed to know them. You don't need to know them either. Though it's cool to have fun little fast ways of doing something, sometimes I find I can do this way faster if I just know what to do and the fundamentals are intact in my brain. Um, I don't need to worry so much, not with lasso anyway, but with like, you know, a lot of the color dodge crap and depending too much on cool little tricks and and all that stuff. Sometimes a lot of the cool tricks on Photoshop are things I just want to be able to do manually and I don't want to depend too much on the digital fun stuff. I want to just uh, see how much I can do on my own. That's why I never really learned how to, you know, do all these crazy tricks on Photoshop. So this is going to get changed. So this needs a little thing. I'll fill that. I'll fill this. So we have I know my, my Photoshop isn't maxed out, and that's okay. So we've got this right here, getting filled with this color. That color, and this gets there. And then we've got the blue of the skies. Oops. Which can get filled like that, and that will get filled in wherever she is. I'm just going to be really rough with it. So a lot of the time I'm spending just like figuring out this crap here. I'm sorry about this. It's okay, it's part of the process. Gives us more time to talk, catch up. down, smudge, smudgety, smudge, blend, 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 okay, let's correct her, so she's got tiny head, a weird hip to leg length, right, up to upper, upper body is just so much more small than the lower body, so I'm going to try to do that first, so I'm going to just Increase that size and bring that down so she looks a little bit more like of an adult size. And then I'm going to fix the face. And before I do that, I just want to talk about what you've done with the hair. It feels oily, it feels unnatural, and I would just get rid of it and give her some kind of like really cool sporty haircut. And then get those, um, get those, uh, you know, wispy hair pieces back. Or if she's, I don't know what you were doing, if that even was a ponytail. But I'm just going to make it a ponytail so it makes more sense. Her hair looked like it was made out of, like, this really light material. It didn't feel like she had, like, normal weight to her hair. So I'm going to try to just give her something super basic like that um, to help out. So that feels a little bit more natural. The hair feels heavy. Ha hair is a lot heavier than, you know, than you imagine. And then we've got the perspective on her face, which Liquify should help us with. So she's got her head tilted back. Let's look at our reference. She's got her head tilted back. 
that means that one eye, we're going to start with one eye and I just need to really adjust this, um, oh and she's an elf too, uh, and I need to adjust this, uh, this, you know, wherever the eyes are looking and she looks like she's looking in the most random spot or she's like blind and can't really see. The nostril follows that perspective. So does the forehead. We don't see the top of the head as much. Getting rid of that annoying line you guys have on the, every mouth you draw. Allowing that mouth to sit with the perspective of the head, those horizontal lines. I'm gonna give her a more natural smile. I feel like you're showing the teeth, you're a bit forcing them. We see more of the nostrils. See how much, see how badass she looks? It's just because she has no perspective, I mean, she has no expression. It's just the perspective of the head tilting back doing all the work. And when a head is in perspective, the eyebrows are further from the eyes because we see the under part of the eyebrows. So many adjustments. Feels like I should just paint in the eyebrows. Um, so many, so many issues. And, uh, and then we have the position of the chin, which is supposed to be in perspective but you're showing an edge as if, the, if we're looking at it from front view. We see the bottom of the chin, we see it. And there should be a point of relief between the chin and the neckline. This was a very big thing to take on for today's critique hour but I, I don't want to shy away from a challenge. Especially if it's so, you know, um, educational. so many changes here, so many mistakes, and it's a full illustration, which are such amazing learning grounds, um, because that's one thing an illustration does. Pursuing masterpieces too early is always a mistake. It's going to slow you down if it's all you do, um, but they're always good educational because it's just so much fun looking at all the mistakes that could have been avoided just if you had done form studies or perspective mapping before you started. Oof, oof, oof. So the chin now is way too low because we shouldn't see this much chin. And zooming out, I'll be able to like tilt more the face away. It's like her head would be more out, so I'll let the transform tool do a lot more work for me. And then tilting that back. Nose needs to be high. Remember, we're seeing the bottom part of everything, so I'm going to take the face out and move it forward, and then I'm going to show less. I'm going to show more of the lower part. Because you can see here, we're seeing the bottom. See this big section here? See that whole thing? That's us seeing the bottom part of the head, which you do not have in yours. I just want to get rid of the smile for now like it's just so awkward um i think that's enough for the perspective i'm gonna try to do one more quick thing with the perspective which is hide more of the far eyes if the nose bridge is hiding a lot okay so she's tilting her head back i'm gonna just sever her head and select it and just move it forward and higher as if she's kind of tilting it away. And I'm going to grab the mouth and move it closer to the symmetry line. I'm going to hide some of the teeth. Unless she's going to smile with her teeth out, don't show an awkward amount of teeth that barely are there. She looks more in control when she doesn't smile like that. Like, see, she does more with her mouth closed. And then now that I have that point of relief between the head and the neck, 
I'm gonna get rid of this line and just let leave it unblend like blended. Leave it unedged because that's what's gonna make it look like we're seeing the bottom part. Or you can just copy your reference and just get a slight value in between the two of them. Anything works in this case, just don't give us the edge out of a head in the wrong perspective because it's it's not gonna make any sense. We only see that edge if we're working with front view balanced with the camera. If the camera is lower, we're gonna see the bottom part of the chin. And I'm blending this out. She feels like she's tilting her head back triumphantly. Um, and it's this this expression in her eyes that doesn't that makes her look like she's looking at a loved one. She's not really I mean, unless you really enjoyed killing those dudes. But for her to look scary, I'd want her to kind of... look further forward. <clears throat> One thing that we can do to her face, to her head, is... Your, yours is kind of tilted a, a bit too much, I think, so this... Kind of movement. She's still tilted, but her head is kind of resting on the gun, but also looking forward. So it's still triumphant. It's still proud. And I think we're giving her a little bit more length on the neck. So before I know whether or not that's a correct amount of length, I'm just going to... Yeah, it feels okay. <clears throat> Just uh, finishing that off. Her head feels a lot more proud because her a proud set of shoulders are shoulders that aren't haunched forward. I know, like a coward's. A coward haunches their <laughs> shoulders. So we have... Um, very, very proud distance between the neckline and the shoulders. And she's leaning her head forward, pulling her gun. Um, one thing that's happened is that this little hair twirl here has kind of thinned out the neck a little too much. The neck comes before the hair twirl. The hair twirl isn't going to cut through the neck. So this little hair curl right here just have it happen after the neck. You're throwing off a lot of perspective markers like this. Oof, so many corrections. Um, I'm also going to get rid of this outline, which I don't know where that came from. And if that was your outline, bad. And I'm going to kind of, um, I'm going to try, I mean, she is squinting, the light is on her, but I'm going to try to find a better position for her to look at. Because if you're looking up and away, you're, you're not really going to have those sh half open share eyes. But if you're squinting, I feel like we squint more with our lower eyes than we do our upper eyelids. So... It still doesn't make sense that her we see so much of the lower eyelid, I mean upper eyelid, which is why I wanted to just open up the eyes. So I'm getting rid of that. Getting rid of that. She just she just had bedroom eyes is basically what I was saying, and it makes no sense. <coughs> bless you. Everyone bless Abu. Bless him um, so that he can get more hearts. Does that make sense? <laughs> I forget how it works. Breath of the Wild. And then we have the shadow of the squint. And you see how much more badass she looks looking? I don't know why she was looking down. No, don't touch that. You already made that decision earlier.
So she looks pretty happy with herself. I mean, she looks like she had a successful bounty hunt. And we didn't have to overdo the eyes and and then the, overdo the lips and, and all that. The far eye still looks like it's in a wonky perspective position. I just want to... No. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. Oh jeez. Oh, forget it. Um, and then to to do one last little perspective marker, I'm going to move the eyebrows up. Though she can still have her stern look, we still need some space under the eyebrows. So it will help make the perspective read a little. And that we're seeing the bottom part. Oh my gosh, lots of changes today. Big changes, but they, you know, they're little changes, but they're big in relation to their fundamental source. And then, of course, we have changes that are small that make a big difference. So tiny little, you know, like the hair, for instance, not necessarily a fundamental to do with lighting and light environment, but made a big difference to her change in her squint in her eyes and her direction of her look that's made a big difference to the, to the plot and to the story, to her character. <clears throat> And I just want to make her look like she's looking more in the distance. You know, this is like a picture her granddaughter had and, you know, oh, that's my grandma. She was a, she was, you know, this heroic bounty hunter and her evil enemy killed her or something. But this is a picture of her and I'm going to follow in her footsteps or something like that. And then for the mouth, if you want to make her look badass, like add more, like raise this, give her a scowl, and just remember to put in the perspective marker for the cylinder valley. You see how badass she looks now? If you want that soft look gone in her face. Okay. So we have these really, really massive changes. And then finally, we're just going to fix the body. So the arm should be a little more relaxed. That's going to be a really quick fix. Oof. Um, just going to try to, do I even fix the arm yet? Just lowering the arm. You know how that just really kind of strong slack in the hand. Just feels like the arm is being weighed down by the whip. And the whip isn't necessarily made of paper. It's a pretty heavy tool all around. <clears throat> and the arm needs to be just a bit bigger. Closer to the body, more relaxed. She's not, you know, with her guard up. She's no longer in danger. And then the whip is finished this way. Okay. And then this leg here feels so awkward. It feels like it's in the wrong perspective. Um, and then I'm just going to with liquefy correct its thickness of the thigh. Her legs look really super skinny. And if she's a female, especially in corset era, she, you want to like exaggerate some of the curves. I mean, she's she's basically a Caitlyn from League of Legends. So, I mean, there's there's curves there as well. It's 
so I would say thickening the thighs at least just to give her some volume strength to her frame so she doesn't look like a hundred pound so-called bounty hunter I mean eat you know Get some protein <coughs> Sorry, I'm not body shaming or anything. I'm just saying, like, it doesn't make any sense for the narrative for her to be so uh, thin and also be strong. I'd say I think she would be, like, you know, 150, 160, 5 foot 9, even heavier than that. Just for us to be convinced that she can kick ass if it came to close range combat. No, I just sound like a boy. <laughs> Talking about shit I don't even understand. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to poof her chest right up because she's very proud. And she's wearing a corset. <laughs> she's doing any of this. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to copy the proportions exactly. But, you know, it, of the reference, but it's good to keep it there just so we understand that her thigh did need to be thicker and this foreleg here this lower leg foreleg area whatever it's called needed to be um more out because it doesn't look like she's standing balanced and she looks more you know badass more sexy this way when her leg is just like that and then she's got the foot tilted up because, again, it's leaning on top of <clears throat> fatty bodies. Or it's rested on top of a bunch of overfed nerduels. Not really. It's just a pile of human bodies. I mean, it's going to stack and it's going to be squishy. <laughs> and then we're going to just erase away so we can see her foot peeking up. And you can go ahead and clean that part yourself. I hate drawing feet. Always have, always will. Alright, so now we have some cool depth. We have a light background. We got some, and I feel like the background needs to be a little bit of light and then you can saturate if you feel like you've lost some vibrance in this in the desert but I feel like it needs to be a little bit lighter because now we have a real difference between her and the background and we have this nice atmosphere here to help along and if you feel like her face is too dull go in there and add some light um, go in there and add a little bit more shine if you need it I'm gonna add in more desert sand because it's nice when it feels that strong <clears throat> like a strong presence in the desert when it comes to sound and be being airborne it's the defining quality of that environment as a study and it'll also help us not get so much shadow towards the lower half of the canvas and then on the upper half of the canvas we're going to bring in a pure white and just throw that in there as the glare of the sun we're not painting in lens flare take it easy there mr what's his name director man <laughs> With the lens flares, Jesus, he uses so many. It makes no sense anymore. It's just a light show. It's just a blue man group concert at that point, um, or like a like a like a like a techno, yeah yeah yeah, yeah young people in your music. <clears throat> the common women's corset was just fabric usually. There wasn't a lot of restrictive structure in them. Uh, she kind of reminds me of that one character from Atlantis, the blonde evil one. Um, yeah. So we have light coming in from the top sand coming in from the bottom we've corrected the perspective uh, on her face and there is a bit more weirdness going on with her nose but and I'll try to do it because her nose has no volume moving out her nose needs to be you just grabbing the tip of the nose and just dragging it out it'll feel like she has you know uh, outward volume on the z-axis not too much though. Too much. Easy. all right and and then the chin is a strong a little bit but i feel like that's really added to her character i kind of just want to keep it strong do you see what i mean about the nose now before after it's just a little too low before 
Some basic shades on the face that need to be added are, um, you know, the temple shadow moving up. Have to turn that off for a second. The cheek, the shadow in between the eyebrows. See how far away I am. And then the highlighters are going to be again the cheek. Catching some basic light, some indirect light. The lip. And then the hairline with some shadow. And if you want to give her that smile, give it in as a radial shade, please. No weird little cartoon lip tails. And then of course, of course, the shadow of the lower part of the chin. <clears throat> so if you want Portrait Studio, it's on sale at 50% off. It's usually $100. Right now it's $45. So it's a little, actually it's not $100, $90. Um, and with the upcoming update, you get free update th free updates for life with a one-time purchase. And with the upcoming update, the price, though it's not going to change anymore, is way over $100 considering how much work we're putting into it. Um, this is an update that's been almost two years in the making, and it's going to completely change the landscape of Porsche Studio, how it works, the power it has. You're going to do batch object um, uh, building. You can build an entire scene. You have endless possibilities. You have endless possibilities right now, but you have endless possibilities coming up even more uh, because you're going to be able to make anything you want with Portrait Studio. Right now it's move one object at a time. You'll be able to soon move many objects at the same time and um, build them, batch them uh, together. So that's an amazing change coming up. We're going to try to bring back Control Z. It was a bit troublesome. That's why we took it out. Um, and we're going to try to bring back a lot of the models that we took out just because they're not top tier. We're going to try, Abu said he's going to try to make it possible to bring in your own models, but right now that's not currently added in Portrait Studio. Um, and that's it for this chain, for the changes in this piece. I'm going to try to make the curls pronounced a little bit more so that they can uh, do more from a distance. Remember, this isn't a close-up portrait, so any nuanced little additions and detail aren't going to be noticed. You're going to have to make things happen that, that still read from a distance. Um, so give a round of applause for Abu for his amazing work on Portrait Studio, really just a master. <laughs> and then uh, something that you can do is just bring in some cast shadows moving in one direction. Um, so I'll be done soon, I promise. It's a bit of a long class today. Uh, so I'm just going to find a shadow color, kind of desaturate it a little bit, go into darken mode, lower the opacity, lock the layer, and then just start casting some shadows moving in one. So maybe her head casting a shadow that way, her arm or her body casting a shadow on her arm. Just basic, basic stuff. I'm going to try to get the universal color of the background. See this? This is really earthy new background color. And I'm going to use that on the leg because now we have a cylinder, thicker thigh. So we need a better lighting there. I'm going to do the same thing for the upper arm. I'm going to do the same thing for the top of the chest. <clears throat> really bringing out the volume. And then again, cast shadow of the tor of the torso on the torso. So the upper torso on the lower torso is going to be a shadow, just like that. Um, a little bit of a shadow there. I can't wait until my house is done so that I can have you know a bigger backyard to do stuff in the summer. It's such an exciting change in my life because so much more space and so much to do and I hope that one thing that scares me and I'm sure it's a natural fear, fear for first-time buyers is the inspection kind of worried about that freaking uh, real estate agent keeps freaking the shit out of me oh we're gonna pass the inspection first like you guys like it after the inspection um so I'm hoping nothing bad happens there but I know it's all commonplace I've bought a house before 
I know the you know the basics of it, but I bought a house, but it's not mine. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I understand the process. I mean, I was there when a house was being bought, um, and uh, and I'm not that scared of the inspection. But now I'm buying the house myself, and I'm freaked out. <clears throat> and then with le levels, I'm going to just bring in a little bit more brightness in the foreground, just on the brights, nothing else. And that should fix the whole scene. Her mouth feels a little bit funny to me uh, because I tried to do an expression and rushed it. So I'm going to just correct it and try to get rid of that expression completely. And this little line here is so overrated. Okay. She looks like Cat, my friend Cat. Oh, lots of changes. Let's try to... The breasts seem level in the reference, but here one breast seems higher than the other. Uh, I'm going to let it slide. <clears throat> okay, so bring back that glare. I'm just going to raise it up a little higher. Flatten, copy. Go up before... Dark background, weird expression. She kind of looks evil. She looks like she's losing all her hair because of the stress. Because chasing bad guys is not a really easy thing to do. Uh, her whip feels like it's an awkward spot. Her body feels like it's just sticks. There's no flesh. After a little bit more bright scene, a lot more bright. Feels a lot more like I feel like closing my eyes. That's how you know, sandy everything is. Saturation is a little bit lower, but you know, if you want to raise it up, go ahead. I really don't feel like we need it. But if she does have like a really red area that needs to be seen as red, saturate that. I don't know how red this needs to be, but saturate it if need be. I don't know how green this needs to be, but saturate it. If you want more colors, it means more fun. Um, if, if this is like gold or something, saturate that. If if that's what you need, just make sure that it's, um, you know, it makes sense that you're only saturating where a light can hit, uh, stuff like that. <clears throat> I'd saturate this green thing a little bit more. It feels like she really likes this green thing. All right. Um, if she's got red lips, saturate that. Okay. But before, after all about her now um, other changes uh, other things I'd add is just if this is a white shirt if this is silk like if it's some kind of really really silky fabric I would make it a bit brighter uh, because it's gonna reflect more light if this is silky if she's got like a really nicely tailored kind of um, whatever this is it might need a bit more shine so see the shine I'm bringing in is deliberate for the texture. If this is shiny, if this leather is shiny, which it should be, has a shiny bit to it. If the pants are like some kind of breathable fabric, the hair definitely needs more attention. <clears throat> I feel like her lips would be better for her character if they were brown, if they were a dark lipstick. So I would actually take them back. To being a brown color. That would really help her look more badass. And um, something like that. And then the white of the eyes needs to be brought down a bit because we've got a lot of shadow on the sun, which makes her a little bit more mysterious. But the cast shadow of the nose needs to travel a little bit further that way as well as the cast shadow of the eyes. Oh, <clears throat> this leg still feels like, I, you know, it still feels really bad um, because it feels like it's stiff, but I, I recommend you do something about it where it feels like if the knee is at least pointing forward. So really quick fix. I'm, just, I'm trying to do this quickly. Um, is if I just, you know, try to aim the detail of the fabric to point forward and then let the lower half travel with it. So as, as if the 
convex shape of the thighs is pointing towards a forward facing knee. That should help us out. And there's a bit of a fold there as well. And a stronger knee this way. <clears throat> but again, we're not really looking at that area, but just so you can see the difference, how stiff that leg was, it felt like a wooden leg. And I'd make that feet, that foot pointing forward. All right, <clears throat> some more atmosphere, a uh, lot more fun. Uh, something that I would do is um, try to blur the background. Really doesn't need to be that visible. It's not that important. I'd blur stuff that is in the foreground, anything that isn't important. And I'd work more on her face. Because the light is hitting her face a little more directly, I'd bring in some kind of uh, blush, some kind of color to her skin. Think about the greens in the skin, the purples in the skin tone uh, palette, stuff like that to help out the face a little, bit, a little more. Okay, and then I'm going to blur the hair just a bit because it should be in motion. So it's just a bit of a blur in the hair. All right, and the cast shadow of the gun on the chin. <clears throat> Lost this piece here. I feel like I want to make the gun a little thicker just so that it looks like she's leaning on it. And that cast shadow can make sense. <clears throat> Any questions at all? So regarding the hair, maybe it's just me, but high ponytails kind of look more glamorous since they require a lot of adjustments, pins to stay in place, whereas lower ones are more practical. Um, who knows? You know, everybody paints things differently. I feel like there are some characters that need a high ponytail to look sporty, and a lower ponytail looks more like a lady. So it's about fashion design and practicality. I'd say fashion does more for the illustration um, than... Uh, uh, than practicality in fashion. You know, it, it feels like, do we really think about how she put her hair up or do we think about how we feel because her hair is so high up? If she's running directly at us, we're going to be scared if she has that Amazonian high, high ponytail. But good question. Um, uh, goth cowboy Lara, Lara Croft. Um, this is a sorcerer. Uh, dramatic change. Any questions at all from anybody? Any, um, just at Istabrak so I can see the question or else I won't see it. There's too many people in the chat. Wouldn't she be more intensity, intensely top lit? It looks like noonish setting. If the sun is behind her, she, she's going to be in a silhouette if we're taking a picture of the sun behind her. And I think the sun is behind her. <coughs> Considering how the lights, how the clouds are being lit. The, the sun is behind the clouds and her back is to the sun. If the clouds behind her were pure white, that means this, the clouds at this point, we're in a point where we're looking at the sun being in front of her and she's in between the clouds and her. Get it? If the clouds are lit up and it's not, the clouds are kind of in a point where they're, the sun isn't behind them and the sun isn't that high. <laughs> this in a sunset the clouds facing the sunset are brighter they light up and the clouds in front of the sunset are dark because they're in silhouette so i feel like she's the sun is so high the clouds are in front the clouds are the sun is behind the clouds and she's her back is against the sun and by all means if you want to you can dodge tool it might, it might even help make some you know rim light have really strong light if that's what you need to you know make it feel like the sun is behind her maybe it's caught some highlights if it's caught some of the light her hair can be a bit more lit up any fabric can be a bit more lit up if that's what you feel like you need it might it might benefit it might be fun to add it <clears throat> but i feel like it feels like a dusty scene she feels strong, she feels dark, and I would, if it was me, I would really dramatize her. I would make her feel a little bit more dangerous by, like, darkening her face just a bit more. 
You know, I just don't want her to look friendly. I want her to look scary. And that's something I would do. This is what I would do to her. Among other things. Oh, joke. <laughs> Oh my god, everybody's getting like a... <laughs> can't believe I made that joke. What's wrong with me? Uh, I've been hanging out with my friend too long. She makes a lot of lesbian jokes. <clears throat> so... <laughs> I'm so old. I'm getting to that age where I just make random ass lesbian jokes. Not. I'm not. Lesbian. <laughs> Shut up, Mr. Rack. You're just completely embarrassing yourself in front of your students. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Shut up, everybody. <laughs> I don't even know why I did that. Yeah, but darkening the upper, the top of the head for me did so much more for the drama. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, before, after. <sighs> if we go by your advice of practicing uh, for masterpieces, what exactly is the problem solving stages for a piece like this would be? What are the problem solving stages for a piece like this? What do you mean problem solving stages? You mean the, I mean, just choose the perspective and find as many references as possible and sketch out the piece and make sure you get critiques before you start rendering or else you're going to be, look at all the corrections I had to do today. You're going to be dealing with that. <clears throat> But do you see how, like, scary she looks when we darken her face a little bit? I don't know why. It just works for me. And you can put the sun directly behind her. So let's keep going with this critique. Why not? Um, you can put the sun directly behind her. If you want to, just to make sense of that new shadow. Oops. And that'll, that'll make it make some more sense. You know, it's just there, barely there behind her in the scene. And that'll make that shadow, that silhouette make sense. You see? That blue sky doesn't have all that much to do for this, for this scene. <clears throat> but even without it, I don't care. Even if I broke a rule and made her head too dark, it still feels good. It still feels dramatic. And then before, after. All right, that's enough for today. Any questions? Uh, perspective mapping means you find the horizon line and you draw some really, really basic uh, vanishing points to help you identify where she is in the perspective we're looking at and where we are. So if we are, if we are right here, and this is where we are. This is our cube. You know, this is our position in relation to the perspective. So this is our cube. This is her cube. Get it? And if this was like the vanishing point, if it's one point vanishing, it means her cube is... Oh, shit. The cube is vanishing towards there, so that means we have this... <laughs> I'll try to do it with a different color. Okay, so this is the vanishing point. This is where the cube's vanishing point is coming from. And that means that this is her perspective, which is why we're seeing the bottom of the base of her neck, because we're seeing the bottom of stuff. So if there were cubes here, working with that one point vanishing, we see the bottom of those cubes. And where we are is lower in line with the horizon than where she is, but we're, we're still above the horizon, everybody is, but we're still lower than she is because she's at this point standing on a pile of bodies. And if you get that and you make your portrait studio model and portrait studio will already, you know, adjust all of the things for you, you're moving the, you're moving the camera, so everything is gonna be adjusted. There's not gonna be one part that lags. You just have to trust your reference. So that's why I'm saying, you don't have to actually map out the perspective on the scene. Just get as many references as possible. <laughs> this image is going to be all right by the time she's done. Um, um, and do you uh, do any live videos of you working on masterpieces? Um, 
I post all of my personal work on Patreon. Uh, so any masterpiece I've ever done, the process for it is available on Patreon. Every year I release the Patreon videos for free. I'm not doing that this year. Um, just because it's not something I want to give out for free anymore. Um, so thank you everyone for watching today. I really appreciate it. If you want to buy a Porsche Studio, it impressed you. You want to have it there to help your paintings, to help complete your paintings. Go to istabrak.com and go on the store tab to get it at 50% off right now. Um, a lot of the changes today were very perspective based and this model definitely helped us capture her attitude. Um, and that's one big aspect of working with references is that you're cornering in the image before you even start painting. Um, my brushes are also on sale. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so as just for a dollar a month, $12 a year. You can join if everybody on Patreon joined. We really would have a self-sustaining uh, community um, that is going to last even outside. Let's say if YouTube fell down, YouTube's crashed or something, we would still have a very active, live, functioning community. We'll find somewhere else to put our videos. Um, not that we're expecting YouTube to crash, but I'm saying it's the community is re really important and it kind of freaks me out how dependent we are right now on YouTube. And if you want educational material in exchange, you can join for higher tiers. Though you don't have to be, you don't have to pay to be a part of this community. This community is all pro bono. Um, but if you want to give back, if you feel like you learned something today and you want to do a dollar a month, that's fully fine and it's not uh, mandatory, but it's uh, encouraged for those who want to give back. Thank you to everyone who joined today for the live recording, the, for the live stream. Um, and I understand for those who can't join the live stream, but I really like it when you guys join live stream. It feels more like a live class. <clears throat> I will let you guys go, and I will see you on Thursday. Look out on the Reddit community pin uh, for the brief, uh, the pitch, the 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 the, the, the um, what is it called? The thing that makes you inspires you to write something. Um, prompt, the prompt that I'll be putting up on the uh, on the on the community uh, for the upcoming environment challenges. All right, bye guys.